I am opposed to any social, political or economic restraint that restricts the ability of women to pursue careers in education, science, politics, the military, the arts or even religion if they prefer to live in cloud cuckoo land like our vicars, priests and parsons. I insist women should receive equal pay and equal rights to that of men. However, there is a crucial distinction between the desire for women to promote the acquisition of these equalities in wages and rights and the formation of a political group led by representatives who promote an ideological creed. There were extreme elements in the women's liberation movement who sought to bulldoze free institutions and the family, both of which we might expect would be ideal venues in which to promote women's rights. And in their place, sow the seeds of their socialist fancies, which would inevitably result in a far worse society for all of us, especially women. Anyone who doubts this need only turn their attention to the communist nations, Cuba, Russia, China, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, North Korea, and now Venezuela. How many of those nations were ever governed by women? By contrast, take Britain with Margaret Thatcher, Israel with Golda Meir, and Germany with Angela Merkel. What have they in common? They are all governed by capitalist systems. It is far easier for a woman to obtain equal pay and equal rights in a capitalist society, which is why the women's liberation movement, with its repugnant sympathy for Marxist ideology, is such anathema to me. Under socialism, it will be the men who meet in lounges to discuss politics over brandy and cigars, while the women remain in the laundrette to wash the red flags for the next rally.